Hi there, this is Sam Flegel, and I'm back again to talk about my Liberty or Death painting. Now, uh, in my first video of this series, I talked about that I would come in later and do some glazing, that the background uh, wasn't, wasn't done, and, well, that was a true statement. And I've spent about a week or so, um, several sessions, rendering the figure and the wings and getting all that stuff. Uh, where I wanted it to be, also cleaning up the edges very tight. If you've seen uh, my other couple of videos, uh, basically the process that I showed for the helm and a little bit for the face is applied to the whole figure. Uh, now I'm coming in and I'm glazing. And what glazing means is uh, it's primarily you're, you're loading the brush uh, mostly with medium and then just with a little bit of pigment in order to tint uh, what's underneath. Um, it, this almost feels like working uh, in a watercolor way uh, where you're adding lots of washes and it's it's similar in nature it just takes a lot longer to dry than with watercolor in order to get the fire effect I'm uh, primarily glazing with cadmium red and Indian yellow uh, also using greenish umber uh, and a little bit of sepia as well as black uh, for the smoke. So uh, right now you see me uh, going in with those darker colors and then coming in with a big brush and just blending everything out, uh, connecting it in. Um, that's really what's great. So the background's fully dry, the figure's fully dry, and that's very important when you're when you're starting the step and it just allows you to add uh, yet another layer of, of color to things. In a way you could think of it like your layers in Photoshop the other thing I did mention is uh, the medium I'm using is once again uh, Linquin, uh, which I'm using for uh, glazing. So I've got a little pool of Linquin on my palette. And uh, you can actually see my palette just barely in the corner, all those little pools of paint. Then uh, I also have clipped to my palette there a disposable palette. And that's just a series of wax paper, white wax paper. It allows me to mix, and then when I'm done with the session, I can scrape up the paint I want to keep and just throw the wet rest away, which I find to be very useful. Um, so just going in again, I'm glazing with Linquin, and then brushing it out, uh, making sure that, you know, smoothing out those brush strokes. And that's sort of just the back and forth of, of this whole process. You know, you, you add in with the glaze, and you can smooth out. Um, you can still wipe things out if you need to. That's one of the great things about oil paint and working uh, in layers uh, is that you can very easily uh, pull stuff out if it doesn't work. Now, you are pulling up everything. It's not like you can just undo the last thing you did, but if it gets uh, you know, out of hand, you, you can change those mistakes. And uh, Once again, I, I talked about this some in a previous video, but I, I am using black. Uh, it is such a great color for glazing, and I would encourage people to experiment with it. You know, the, the warnings you get are always, don't mix it in the shadows, and that's true. You don't want your shadows to just be flat and black, but that doesn't mean don't ever use black. It means, you know, learn uh, how, how black uh, is applicable. And you can see I've gone a little too dark, and so I'm wiping out actually back because I liked some of that blue that was showing through in the original painting. Now, one thing you can't see in this video is that I have a cork board uh, that's just above my drawing and painting table, and I use that to pin different references. And so I, I keep a reference file of uh, images I've collected of fire, and I'm definitely looking at those. And it's not that I'm specifically trying to mimic uh, the, the pictures of fire, but I'm examining, you know, when does the fire go red, how much smoke is coming off of it, that I'm trying to bring those things out in my own image so that the fire, uh, you know, even though my, my work is pretty stylized, um, you know, that it still evokes uh, realness in, in places. Uh, I, I call my work stylized realism uh, for that reason. Um, you know, it definitely falls into imaginative realism. Um, but anyways, I am using reference, and I, I do think that that's such an important thing uh, for people to to both realize that it's it's not a crutch, it's it's actually saving me time and and helping me um, along the way, and it just brings the painting to life. Uh, and and rather than just staring at it and wondering what what should you do next, 
you know, you look up at that reference and you try to study and understand and, you know, also just as you're out into the world, you know, when I'm sitting around a fire, I actually will let my mind wander and start thinking about, you know, what colors would I use to, to paint that fire or how, how would I get in there? So it is important to, you know, observe the world around you, but photo reference is a great way to jog your memory of those things. And as I uh, start adding in these final smoke effects, uh, realizing that uh, getting close to the end of this process, I probably will come in again and do some more glazing um, just once this dries. But here you can see a uh, close-up of the image as you're going through here. And then also here's a zoomed-out version. Uh, give you an idea of how it's coming along. So there you go. That's it for today. I'm Sam Flegel. Thanks for watching.